Good morning, it's time. It's the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Listen, coming up on today's show, you see I'm dressed in purple. It's Domestic Violence Awareness Month. We're talking about it. I have a story that is going to make you totally sit at the TV and say, wow, it's happening right here. Plus Entertainment T and Jeff talking. It's the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Good morning. Here we go. <laughs> Everybody, everybody get up. Come on. Motivation, inspiration, educating new revelations. Just for you. Smiling at the sky. Somebody turn the lamp on. All right, well, it's time for the entertainment tea. I have lots for you this week, so we're gonna get right to it. First of all, I know everybody's wondering, Jeffrey, presidential debate, what are your thoughts? You know I have them, <laughs> so go ahead, sit right there. Let's talk about it. First of all, presidential debate, of course, Governor Mitt Romney and President Barack Obama. Listen, first of all, it was sort of like, I don't know, the rich, wealthy uncle versus the old uncle who says whatever comes to his mind. President Obama was not playing any games. He was going to give it to Mitt Romney. And Mitt Romney was like, no, you're not gonna give it to me. I'm coming back after you. Now, the first, some of the funniest moments that I will have to say, President Obama gave Mitt Romney a look like, especially, do you remember the part? Yes, the part when they were talking about Libya, and he was like, how dare you talk about my um, association? It was like, wow, he really came for blood this time. He was ready to make sure that he defended his cause. Now, Mitt Romney also said, hey, I'm not taking anything. I'm going to say what needs to be said. Funniest line from you, Mitt Romney, binders full of women. I need to find these binders. I need to find them. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm leaving it alone. All right, in other news, talking about entertainment tea, Beyonce, maybe she was one of the women in those binders full of women. <laughs> I don't know. But Beyonce will be performing for the Super Bowl this year. That's right, she will be at the Superdome down there in New Orleans, Louisiana. I hope they have some Popeye's chicken at the, um, the Super Bowl. That would be good, wouldn't it? Mm -mm, good. Mm, I can taste the flavors. But Beyonce will be there. I'm excited. Now, this will be a reason to watch the Super Bowl simply because Beyonce is going to be the halftime show. You can't get any better than that. Now, if, let me tell you right here. Okay, come on in. If they put any of the following singers to sing the national anthem, I'm done. Carrie Underwood, Jennifer Hudson, and what's the other one name? That's right, Kelly Clarkson. I'll even take Fantasia. But most of all, you know what? Put Patty LaBelle, so Patty can get up there. Oh, see, can you see? He, he. Yes, Patty, you better suffer a little while. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. Listen, also talking about entertainment, I gotta look over at my producer because my producer keeps me right. So we're also talking, we're talking Nashville. Y'all saw Nashville? I love Nashville. It comes on ABC on Wednesday. Outstanding show. ABC, I gotta give you kudos, because first of all, you know I'm a diehard Fox fanatic. I love Fox. But ABC is giving you some good drama, not only with Scandal, but with Nashville. Now, of course, Nashville this past, well, it didn't air this past week, but you need to go back and see the first episode. And it's on iTunes. Go to iTunes and also guess what I found. On iTunes, there's the pilot episode that you can see and it's absolutely free. So go there, Nashville, excellent show. But my favorite part, when Lena said, you can kiss my, I don't know what else she said, something like that. But it was something like, you can kiss my behind as it walks out the door or something like that. No, she did not cuss. It was national TV, folks. Come on, and I'm not gonna cuss, because I don't do that. That's not what we do here on the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Happy times, happy people. All right, do we have any more time? I got more topics to talk about. Can we talk a little bit more? We can talk a little bit more. All right, so listen, one more thing that we're gonna talk about. Excited, I'm ready. I love my producers. Shout out to my producers, because they're here in the studio this morning. Jason Stroud and Olivia Hyatt. Hey, the things that happen at the Jeffrey Lampkin Show are not just me. We make it great because we work as a team. All right, the deer, yes. Take a look at this video real quick. So I know you're seeing this video, right? Hilarious. Bambi is trying to get in to Anytime Fitness up in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Look, go ahead, Bambi. Bang, bang, look at him. <laughs> 
Bambi is trying to, so she, she trying to bake into the gym. Why is he trying to um, break into the gym? He wants to get fit. It's almost Christmas time. Somebody has to fly and carry Santa. And you know, I heard Santa gained a few extra pounds from eating those Oreo cookies. My producer is saying, Jeffrey, you got to wrap. We got to go. Listen, we've got a serious show today. So this is your comedy moment now. You've laughed. Now it's time for a journey. I want everyone in front of the TV, man, woman, boy, girl, child, everyone get in front. We're talking domestic violence. That's why I have on my purple. It's Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Go put your stockings on. I know it's church time. Get your grits. We're talking. We'll be right back. It's the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Coffee comes up. Pinky's out. Good morning. <laughs> How many books are in the Bible? How many what now? How many books? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I have no idea. Ooh. Uh, a lot. A lot. How many books are in the Bible? <gasps> I don't know. Okay, it's okay, it's okay. 12. 60, 64? Uh, I don't even know. 66. Hallelujah! 66. I love it. How many books? 66. 66 books are in the Bible. <laughs> Whew, I'm back. All right, I had to come off the street real quick because I had to come to tell you first and foremost, listen, if you see me on the street, don't come near me because I am sick right now. I am, I'm contagious. Listen, nonetheless, listen to me. Okay, the Jeffrey Lampkin Show at gmail.com. Anytime we're giving away stuff, you know we're always giving away. We were giving away a trip. Look at this. Who won the trip to Charlotte, North Carolina? Congratulations to you. Congratulations. We're excited. Listen, you too can be a winner. The Jeffrey Lampkin Show at gmail.com. What am I giving away today? It's the plus factor. Toss that over here real quick. My producer does. The plus factor. We're giving it away for you. That's right. The plus factor by author Tamika Sims. You need to read this book. I'm giving away one copy. Now remember, I'm going to give five copies to anyone who's dealing with domestic violence. But one copy just to a reader, because that's what we do here at The Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Email us, The Jeffrey Lampkin Show at gmail.com or go to Facebook, it's The Jeffrey Lampkin Show. I gotta go, more show to do. Gotta go, girl, bye-bye. <laughs> Cannon and Graves is a proud sponsor of The Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Located at 1837 Wilson Road in Newberry, Cannon and Graves has the perfect certified used car for you. Their extensive inventory has something in every price range, and they can get everyone financed, regardless of credit. All cars come with a warranty to give you the peace of mind you deserve. Come see Steve and Reggie, and find your new car at Cannon and Graves. All right, and we're back here on the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Listen, coffee cups down right now. We're going inside. We're talking a serious topic this morning. Of course, I have on my purple in honor of October, which is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And as we talk about domestic violence, of course, recently in Columbia, we heard about the domestic violence um, fatal shooting that happened. And domestic violence is a serious subject. And I am so excited this morning that I have a dear friend who experienced domestic violence firsthand, and she's going to share her story, not only her story of what happened, but her story of survival. Author Tamika Sims is here on this morning. Good morning, friend. Good morning. How are you this I'm morning? I'm wonderful. How are you? Uh, first of all, let me tell you, <laughs> you look absolutely Thank amazing. You. Take a look at this. Thank you. You are such a <laughs> Let me go. All right. Get me excited. It makes me happy. Tamika, yes. we're talking domestic violence. Yes. It's something serious. It is. It is a serious subject. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of times people don't realize the signs beforehand right. that will make you aware. Exactly. Talk to me about domestic violence mm -hmm. and just what it means to you. Why, why are you such an advocate for it? I'm an advocate for domestic violence because it's a subject that's often not talked about or discussed outside of the home. Mm -hmm. We have many women, children, um, families that are suffering in silence because it's an issue where, you know, what happens in the house stays in the house and it's not brought before communities like it needs to be. And so because of my personal experience and my personal story of survival, it gives me an opportunity to be an advocate, to be a voice for those who have not yet found their voice and for those women that don't yet have the courage to stand up and speak out. When people hear domestic violence, what exactly would you define as domestic violence? Domestic violence is um, what happens when you have an intimate partner relationship where one partner exhibits more power and control over the other. Mm -hmm. And it can happen in several forms. So we're talking physical 
physical abuse, you know, broken limbs, black eyes, mm -hmm. and those things. Then we're talking sexual abuse, we're talking spiritual abuse, mm -hmm. financial, social isolation, mm -hmm. emotional and verbal abuse, which is often the most dangerous. Let's do that last one right there. Emotional and verbal, verbal abuse, abuse is the most dangerous. And people don't realize they that. Don't. A lot of times when you hear domestic violence, you automatically think it's something physical, yeah. someone needs to have a black eye, a mm -hmm. broken rib, or something of that nature. Right. But domestic violence, the trends and stuff, yes. start even before right. with the verbal. That's what right. would be some signs that people can realize in the, out there right now, mm -hmm. people can realize that, you know what? This is happening, yeah. and it is real. You're dealing with a case of domestic violence. Right. What are some of the signs? Some of the warning signs, especially for verbal abuse, is somebody that's constantly putting down your self-esteem. Mm -hmm. If somebody is damaging your sense of self, damaging who you are as a person, that's a sign that you need to get out of that relationship. Mm -hmm. If someone is exhibiting signs of jealousy early on in the relationship, that's also a huge red flag, mm -hmm. because oftentimes jealousy in a relationship will cause one of those partners, or both of those partners, to be killed. Mm -hmm. um, Anybody that's trying to isolate you from your friends and your family, trying to monopolize any free time that you have by saying, I want to spend more time with you, I just love being in your presence, all of those are warning signs of violence. Wow. Mm -hmm. And domestic violence can occur across both genders. Yes. Female and male. Yes, it can. Is it often that you see signs of domestic violence coming from females towards males? We don't see that a lot in South Carolina. Historically, about 85 to 90 percent of victims in domestic violence cases are women. Okay. And so the men who are dealing with domestic violence, should they feel weak? They shouldn't feel weak. I always say that violence, however it's perpetrated in a relationship, is wrong. Right. So whether that's coming from male perpetrated abuse or female perpetrated abuse, it's still wrong in a relationship. You know, we're in these relationships because we want to bring out the best in the other person, not mm -hmm. the worst. And we don't want to be with someone that's constantly dragging us down, that's constantly putting us down and making us not feel worthy of love. Say that one more time. See, I need people to understand. One thing about the Jeffrey Lampkin Show, we make sure that you are aware. So yes. we talk about relationships because everybody, right. this is my boo, this is who I love, yes. this is my baby. Yeah. But your baby will never that's right. put you down. They'll never put you down. They'll never make you feel bad about yourself. They'll always support you in your dreams, your goals, your vision for your life. And if you're connected to someone that's not doing that, that's a sign that you need to get out of that relationship. So you were working for Sister Care? Yes. Working for Sister Care. Sister Care is? Sister Care is a local nonprofit organization that provides services and advocacy to battered women and their children. Okay, so you were working for Sister Care yes. and you're being an advocate for yeah. so many women mm -hmm. out there working, hitting the pavement for them mm -hmm. and pushing this subject of domestic violence and yeah. making people aware. Yeah. However, you were a victim. Yeah. I was employed with Sister Care for a little more than six years, and the most volatile years of my personal relationship were while I was at the agency. Um, even when I was physically and, and sexually assaulted by my abuser, those were when I was employed at Sister Care. So it, what, I, what happened to me was it heightened the guilt and the shame that I felt. It was difficult to go to work the next day and have to hide bruises from my coworkers and have to explain to them the very intimate details of what happened to me and then still trying to smile and do my job. Um, you know, I was abused during Christmas time, so a time when so many are celebrating with their friends and their families. I had such negative memories surrounded by that particular time of the year, so it was very, very hard. And I want to I wanna go there, and the reason I want to go there this morning because the first part of healing mm -hmm. is confession. Yes. If you're going through a situation out there or something is happening, in order for you to get past where you are, you have to confess that there is a problem and that something happened. Yeah. Take us to your relationship. You okay. were married for, tell us, first of all, let's take us to the good times. To the good times. Because obviously, before you got there, mm -hmm. you thought things were well. Yes. So there was some fraud in the picture. Yes. Talk to us um, about it. I met him when I was 23. We, did, we didn't marry, we just dated for a really long time, almost 10 years. Mm -hmm. Um, in the beginning, he was very nice. He was sweet. He and I were both actively involved in the same church. You know, he was the type of guy that cared about the elderly, that would visit the sick and um, take communion out to them if they could make it to church on Sunday. And he would be there for, you know, teenage moms, you know, or for children that grew up in homes without with absentee fathers. You know, he was that guy. So you're seeing him with women. Yes. Working with them. Working with women. Loving on them. Loving on them. Um, you know, he had children, and so he was, you know, complimentary of his um, children's mom, and so. Um, but. Because they always say yeah. that a guy 
will treat you mm -hmm. how he treats his mother. Yeah, See? and he was very loving towards his mother. Um, he helped her out quite a bit around the house. He's very handy, very crafty. You know, so he was that guy. And, you know, the attraction that I felt for him and the life that began to develop over the years, um, that grew into love. And but very soon on after we decided to form a dating relationship, that's when things really went downhill. So y'all weren't even married yet. No. Just dating. Yes. And as you're dating, mm -hmm. you realize something's going wrong. Yeah. The number one red flag with me in the very beginning was the fact that he wanted to keep our relationship a huge secret. Um, mm. And even now, many people that are a part of the church that we belong to at that time still do not know that we were dating. So y'all attending the same church? Yes. So he would abuse you on Friday or Saturday, mm -hmm. and y'all would go in church on Sunday, yes. like the modern family. Right. It is just beyond just the church, just the job, places that you go. Sure. You don't know what people are dealing exactly. with. Tamika, we're going to dig more into this story okay. because I need to help people become yeah. healed with where they are right now. Yeah. Listen, we're here. We're talking about it. It's domestic violence awareness. You're going to become aware. Pick your coffee cups right now. I'm going to get some hot tea because I'm about to cough. I'm not feeling too well. But stay right here. We'll be right back. It's the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Good morning. Jeffrey Lampkin. <laughs> Somebody turn the lamp on. Go see Dr. Terrence Tyndall at Jerome & Company. Don't worry, ladies. They carry women's clothing, too, so you can look your best every day. For beautiful casual and dress attire for men and ladies, go to the Columbia Style Leader, Jerome & Company. And we're back here on the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Listen, before the break, we were talking domestic violence with Arthur, Tamika Sims. And we found out in the first section that, Tamika, you were a victim yes. of domestic violence. Yes. Not only were you a victim of domestic violence, but that your who became your husband. Right now, we're at the portion where y'all are still dating. Yes. Haven't become married yet. Yes. But he was in the church, yes. involved in the church, mm -hmm. helping mama. Fixing, yes. helping the elderly, yes. doing all of these things. Yes. So you are at the part of dating now. I'm yes. going right into it, viewers. We're going right here. We're okay. at the part where we're dating. Yeah. And take me there. So we're dating. We're dating. Um, you know, he was very attentive. Mm -hmm. um, it's very sweet. Mm -hmm. um, paid a lot of attention to me. Um, I had a son, young son, so he's very helpful with my son. Okay. Um, but you know there were still red flags, still some warning signs, still some indicators that I should have gotten out of that relationship. What were some of the red flags? Why y'all are dating? While we're dating, um, he, there was this huge stigma of him wanting to keep our relationship secret. Okay. Um, we had to keep everything a secret. Mm -hmm. um, no one could know that we were talking. No one could know that we were dating. He called it privacy. And that privacy, that silence surrounding our relationship really could have been deadly. And let me guess, he used the excuse probably that, you know, when people get in your relationship, yes. it just mix, messes everything up. Yes, as he okay. liked to say, he didn't want people to be in our business. Wow. And so that was his justification. Okay, so y'all are dating. Mm -hmm. Everything's fine. You're seeing a little bit of red flags, but you pay no attention to it. Right. You pass it to your mind. Exactly. Take me to marriage. So he proposed? No, we didn't get married. You didn't get we married? We did get married. Okay. There was talks of marriage in okay. our relationship. Um, but he said he was the kind of guy that had taken care of so many women before mm -hmm. that he um, wasn't sure that he wanted the kind of marriage and wedding and relation, long-term relationship that I did. Did you ever know any of his past female relationships? I didn't know them, but I just heard about them through him. Heard about them through mm -hmm. him. Okay, so we're dating, going through. Mm -hmm. When did the physical abuse, because we already talked about the verbal abuse. Yes. When did the physical abuse start? The physical abuse started towards the end of our relationship. Okay. Um, in fact, the most violent incident that ended our relationship was one night after I had come home from teaching a Bible study class. Um, now you were teaching where? At, at the local church. At the local church. Yes. So you're at the local church and you're teaching. Mm -hmm. Was the local church, well, we're gonna go there in a minute. Okay. Okay. Take me to your Bible study okay. that night. Okay. Um, it was actually end of the year Christmas fellowship. So it was a jovial time. We were sharing and laughing and just having a good time. And, um, you know, right after I, I was getting ready to go home, after everyone had left and dispersed, I went back home. Um, he said some very ugly words to me when we got back to my house. And then, Why? Well, he accused me of seeing somebody else at the church. So he was... Um, the jealousy. The jealousy. And then his face began to change. Um, and he said the words to me, I'm going to beat you. And so after saying those words to me, that's exactly what he did. Um, his youngest son was sitting in my den. 
And then he pulled me to the back bedroom and he started with, you know, slamming me into the wall, slamming me on my bed, um, tearing my clothing, scratching my chest. Um, so that beating lasted for several hours. Um, there's actually one particular chapter in the book where I call it Hell's Kitchen because that's where the um, violent incident actually stopped. And we talk about the plus factor. The plus factor is the book. Yes. This was your healing mechanism. Yes. I read this book. This book is an outstanding reel. Thank you. Um, it starts healing. Yes. Um, for anyone that's in a situation and you feel like you don't want to talk to anyone about the situation, all I ask is that you read this book. Where can they go find the book real quick? It's everywhere books are sold. Amazon, BarnesandNoble.com, There's not Google an excuse. Books, not an excuse. There's not an excuse. And here's what I'm going to do. If you are dealing with this situation, if you're dealing with domestic violence, if you are dealing with it or someone that you know, email me now, the Jeffrey Lampkin Show at gmail.com. I'm going to give you five copies of this book. Personally, myself, I'm going to purchase. Tamika is going to give away a book yes. beyond that because she wants to be a blessing to someone. But I'm personally, you have to email me. And if you are dealing with domestic violence, all I want you to do is to read the book. I'm not going to put your business out there. I'm not going to say anything. I want you to read the book. And if you don't want to disclose it to us here at the show, then you can let, um, they can go on Amazon. Yes. They can go on on. Um, Kindle, Barnes, yes, they can get it from the Kindle or the their Kindle. Nook. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you talked about Hell's Kitchen. Yes. That was the first beating. Yes. Was there more? There was not more. There After the more. physical assaults occurred, um, then hours. there was sexual abuse. It was hours. That beating lasted seven hours. Um, did it, it started, feel like an eternity? It did feel like an eternity, and at some point during the evening, I lost track of time. Um, I just went kind of within myself and balled into the fetal position and was just wanting it to be over. What was his son doing at the time? He was sitting in the den watching TV. Had no clue what Had was no going clue. on? He told me to remain silent, and um, so I did. I didn't want his son to know what his dad was doing to me, so, yeah. And this is the guy in the church yes. who's helping the elderly. Mm -hmm. well, when we talk about the, ch the church, because people say this all the time, they say, you, you know how women tell you, if you want to mm -hmm. find a good man, baby, and get you go one to in the, the church. church. Yeah. But they didn't necessarily get one in church. You need to get one that's in the Lord. Exactly. And you really need to pay attention. Um, and I tell women, I've spoken at groups before, and I tell them, don't let that be your number one reason to be in a relationship with somebody. Don't be blinded by the fact that they're in the church. Right. Um, active in ministry and doing the things that um, he was doing. He was a licensed deacon. But that did not matter. That did not change who he was at the core of his being. That day, so you, you're doing that night, you're walking mm -hmm. out, you, you, the, the beating happens, mm -hmm. it's over. The beating what do you was do? over. Um, I can remember specifically going upstairs, um, taking a shower, and then getting in the bed. Okay. And about 15 minutes later, he's standing in my bedroom. He pulls me out of the bed and proceeds to sexually assault me. Jeez. And um, after that, he left and uh, went outside. He had already destroyed my cell phone, and so um, he locked me in the house, and I couldn't go anywhere, couldn't run, um, couldn't call anybody for help. How did you get out? Um, the next day, my mom and my son showed up. Um, Just a visit? No, she was bringing my son to me to um, get ready for school, and I hid under the covers because I didn't want them to see my face. Um, but you know, I couldn't do that forever because Can't I still had mama. to get up and go to work. Yeah. And I couldn't hide from my son. Mm -hmm. um, and that's probably one of the things that broke my heart was because of having to lie to him and not be honest with him and tell him what really happened and does trying to explain the bruises. Does he know now? He does. He does. He does. Is that where the healing began? The healing began for me um, really just being honest with myself, mm -hmm. um, acknowledging the truth of where I was in my situation and what had happened to me. Wow. Once I admitted it, once I acknowledged it, then that's what really began the healing process. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm, I'm gonna take a, a, a executive decision right here because the story's not over. Right. Because there's a story of survival. Yes. 
we're going to talk about that. And Tamika, I'm going to invite you. Will you come back next week? I will definitely Tamika's come back. coming back next week because this is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And I need people out there. We've got to stop the violence, whatever it is that we have to do. Tamika's going to come back. I'm going to give opportunities in the meantime for people to get this book. You have to get the book, The Plus Factor. Email me here, the Jeffrey Lankin Show at gmail.com. We've got to go. Yes. Tamika's coming back next week. We're going to do more. Thank you. We're going to talk again yeah. because we heard the story. So I want you to let that marinate this week mm -hmm. and think about your situation. And then we're coming back. We're going to do more. Thank you so much You're for welcome. coming. Thanks Keep for it right me. here, viewers. We'll have more. It's the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Coffee cups up. Pinkies out. Good morning. Momo's Bistro, now serving lunch Tuesday through Friday from 1130 to 2 and Sunday brunch from 1030 to 230. Classic Southern food with classic French preparation. Dijon and shallot encrusted New York strip, fresh seafood over local green salad and vegetables, and so much more. In a comfortable yet elegant setting. Momo's Bistro, 2930 Divine Street. What's the name of the national anthem? You knew that one. Um, the Declaration of Independence. You got me baffled. Um, oh, if you wouldn't ask me, I could have told you. What is the official name of the national anthem? Which one? The real name of the national. Oh, beautiful. My Lord. country tis of thee. My country tis of thee. Okay. Is that it? The Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> Star Spangled Banner. Banner. Very good. Which national anthem? Mm -hmm. For America. Oh, um, the Star Spangled Banner. The Star Spangled Banner? Say it again. Star Spangled Banner. All right. Star Spangled Banner. The Star Spangled Banner. The Star Spangled Banner. The Star Spangled Banner. Very good. See? Wow, what an amazing show. Hope you got a little laughter there. Listen, had to make you laugh because we've had such a heavy show today, but sometimes we have to go there. Listen, the word for today, is awareness. Awareness, according to Webster, is defined as the state of being aware. And we have to become a nation and a people who are aware of what's going on, what's happening around us, not only with ourselves, but with our friends and even our enemies, because you never know what can affect you in a way. You heard the story today as we talk about domestic violence and Domestic Violence Awareness Month. You heard the story. You heard Arthur Tamika Sims talk about her journey, how you know she met someone who she thought was one thing but they were a fraud and they appear to be another listen you need to get the book the plus factor is going to work for you but I want to leave you with this quote I am what the Word of God says I am I am more than a conqueror I am more than victorious and I will do what the Word of God says that I can do stay aware keep it right here next week we're coming back more domestic violence it's the Jeffrey Lampkin show coffee cups up Pinky's out. You've been lamp. Good morning. <laughs>